and welcome to Thursday Live, everyone. What's happening? Uh, I think we're good, right? Volume and that kind of stuff. Maybe it's too loud. Anyway, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, today, uh, we're going to be working on a uh, painting that I started on Monday. Um, I wanted to do uh, a demo on Monday for one of the viewers of the Monday Night Live feed. And... Um, I started it. I didn't get very far. We had a good night. I mean, I got to do a lot of explaining about how I was doing what I was doing. We were painting some rocks, uh, underwater rocks type of thing. And um, so I got to explain a lot, but I felt like I left it in a, in a kind of a, like too unfinished. Uh, I wanted to kind of really push it farther along in that demo, but it didn't get as far as I wanted it to. So what I would, thought I'd do was turn the rest of that into a time lapse. So people who would watch the beginning of the feed or watch the feed on Monday um, would then be able to watch the time lapse and see the rest of it, essentially. So what we're going to do today is, we're, or tonight if you're in the UK, is we're going to do uh, the video for that time lapse. Essentially, you guys are going to be watching it real time. But then after it's all done, I'll end up taking the video and... Um, and turning that into the time lapse so that's what we got today and um, I'll, I'll be able to talk to you guys and, and watch comments and everything but the camera will just be on the painting the whole time so there won't be any switching around or looking at reference or camera in camera or anything like that it'll just be that close-up of the painting so that's what we got all right so welcome 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 everyone uh, let me switch over and um, I will hit record and we will get started okay so this is where we're at um, and I'll explain uh, once I get things fired up here. We'll start recording now. And I will say hello to everyone. What's nice about the time lapses, they are, they are really condensed. So, like, I can talk to you guys and let this sit here and not worry too much about um, gaps and things like that. And I can edit out a lot of stuff, too. So, Rick, what's up, Rick? Excellent. So what I've done since Monday, if you if you had seen the feed or if you want to go back on Facebook, um, you can rewatch that feed too. Um, what I did were these two rocks right here, um, and and what what that is is um, there there were just one the one to the left is underwater and the one to the right is was slightly above water, uh, so the same rock type of thing, um, but they they completely different in the way that they the colors work on them because of the the green and the algae and all that so that's what we're kind of showing so what I've done since then I did the demo you can kind of see the two unfinished pieces um, what I've done since then is uh, I basically cut out all the stuff that's underwater that's green and based all that in uh, and all I did was uh, grab a, a couple cutouts here's one of them and I just blocked it off and then mixed up the light green and, and moved it on uh, and that's how I got it. So there you go. Paul, what's up, buddy? All right. So what I've done next is I've taken, um, I'm going to block in the, the darker colors now, the, the gaps between those rocks. And what I've done is I've taken another photocopy and cut out all the, all the, the darker areas. These are all like a deep blue. So we're just going to pick it up from here. Um, this is a five by seven piece of ampersand board, um, which going to work out great for this painting and it's the copy is made exactly um, five by seven so that way I can uh, just um, drop it right on there and line it up and it's all ready to go so if you guys have any questions again shoot them uh, out um, again I'm not gonna be able to switch cameras to show you different things because of the way the time lapse is going to work it's going to have to just be on this one spot but, uh, but certainly ask your questions, and again, there won't be any audio on this, obviously because it's time-lapsed. I mean, there'll be music and stuff, but that's about it. All right, let me, um, oh, this brush is cleaned out. Oh, that was good. All right, so the blue is kind of a, um, uh, it's a dark blue, but it's got some white in it too, which makes it more pastel. So I think what I'm gonna use, since this is a real greenish blue, I'm going to use uh, the Wicked Opaque Thalo Blue. So I'm going to start with that. 
Thank you all as well for those who are subscribing to the channel. Um, it's it's growing. It's growing just how I want it to grow. You know, it's all people who are really into it, it and which is which is really nice. And um, we are just about to break that uh, first threshold for this channel, which is a thousand subscriptions. So um, I really appreciate it. It it, um, it is what drives this channel. I have a lot of plans for it. Um, which will be really good. Um, we have the right now we have the live feed on Thursdays and there's the um, Tech Tuesdays and the open studio. I'm going to have one more thing on Friday, um, which will be kind of a Q&A slash um, time lapse type thing. So one week it'll be time lapses. The other one will be uh, te uh, question and answers. And um, eventually when we get it there. We probably do some sort of subscription component, some join type of thing. If people are looking for a little bit more than what we than I'm doing just on the channel, um, we'll do a subscription based thing and we'll offer some extra things for those folks. So that'll be fun. All right. So there's there's the blue. So what I've done is I've taken the phthalo blue, but then added a little bit of uh, white to it. And that gives it that pastel feel, not super pastel, but it begins to break like the intensity of that blue. To get it darker, I'm going to add a little bit of the black. And this is reduced black. It's one to one. So um, if I put a drop of straight on black, it'll get really, really kind of too dark too fast. It says hair all over. I don't know where those come from. All right. So this is the black in here. And this will give me kind of a slate, a slate blue which is good. It's a good place to start. I'm going to add a little bit of reducer to this. I want a little bit more control over it. And I'm going to add a little bit of 4050 to it as well. That's all that's all in one. This is uh, one to 10. So it's one part 4050 to 10 parts reducer. So it's going to reduce it, but it's also going to add a little bit of 4050 to it to give it a little bit of transparency. Yeah, it looks good. This will be a good base because with this base, I can go darker and I can go lighter with it, too. But this will block everything in really nicely. Dan, what's up, buddy? All right. Is that in the right spot? I think that's in the right spot. Not really. I'm going to move this a little bit. I'm also working on a, um, I, I debated, um, there's a painting I'm, I'm just starting, a commission that I'm working on now. Um, and I'm, I was debating on whether doing that one for the feed, which would be a lot of fun. Um, but uh, there's still too much prep work to be done on that uh, for me to um, be able to do that for the feed. So, but I will be able to do that in the feed at some point because that's going to be a pretty involved painting. It's going to take a while to get that done. Um, so I will uh, keep you guys up on that too. It's neat. It's um, the idea behind the painting is um, it's an old, it's a painting of an older gas station. that's not even there anymore in Massachusetts. And um, I have I have photos of the gas station when it was being built back in the 40s and then when it was operating. And so I have to make a painting that makes it look like it's basically in its heyday. So it'll be a lot of fun to do that. Okay. Get that back to where it should be, which is up here because it slid around. There we go. Okay, good. Michael Lake, what's up, buddy? Simon Carter, what's happening? All right. So this blue again, this blue is going to act as a base. I don't want this in here either. Move the photo here off to the side. This blue is just a acts as a base. It just it just kind of um, reserves the spot for the darkest blue eventually. But if I get this stuff in now, I can work on the um, I can work on the rocks without having to worry about getting all kinds of overspray on it. So what happens is you think about 
I'm trying to get a good, a good analogy for, for what's going on with, with blocking in. Um, say you have two, two, two empty cups and you want to fill them with liquid. The same, you know, the, do you want to fill them both up? Essentially what I'm doing is I'm filling both cups, but I'm putting a little bit in one and then a little bit in another and a little bit in another so that they stay roughly even the whole time until they're all filled up. I just don't fill one up and then fill the other one up. That's what this is, but just with color and value. So instead of completing one area with its color and value all the way to end, the end, I do a little bit on one part and then I do a little bit on the other. And I keep going until until I get them both to where they're supposed to be at the same time. And it, it's, a, it's a nice balance. It helps to keep things in check. Like you don't, you know, one part doesn't run away with, with with the values or the colors and then you find that it's not quite right when you get the other one up to speed. So this is all kind of what it is. You see how, um, you know, this is like a, especially on the, on the green, it becomes this like really kind of, um, darker, like a super dark surf green almost, but eventually this will be really deep blue, like a black, blackish blue and then what these are what I'm painting in now is these are just the little um, spaces in between all the rocks they're really really dark but they have this neat blue cast to them so it's kind of what's going on with it So I'm expecting to spend a while on this, so I'll, I'll paint for a little while today and then we'll, you know, we'll just break and, and then that'll be, you know, kind of where it is. So I'm not going to get, you know, I'm not going to finish this today by any stretch. But again, with these videos, um, as I record these videos, I'll just end up putting them all together and then, and then time lapsing them and afterwards, just putting them all together. And that I'll post and I'll let everyone know. but you guys will actually see it real time here before I go and condense it all down. There we go, that looks good. Did I really? No. I thought I just jammed the airbrush into the holder and bent the needle, but I, I didn't, I hit the side of it. All right, let's see what this looks like. What I'm gonna have to do though, so I don't want the panel to move. I ordered the, uh, the extra magnet, um, the sheet magnet today. So, uh, you know, I put sheet magnets on the back of all these panels and that's how they stick to the board. So I'm, I'm out of sheet magnet now. So I had to rebuy it, but there you go. So that's what it looks like. And, um, this will flash across the time lapse, but still I said I wouldn't do this, but I'm going to do this. So that's kind of what we're, we're shooting for. So you can see those dark areas between that's, that's what, what I just put in. All right, good. It's a good start right there. So now I'm going to jump back to the um, texture on some of these rocks to kind of start breaking them in. So that's what I mean. So I've put in all that, uh, you know, that darker blue. So now I can start working on the texture of the rocks all over the place. And then all I got to do is tint those dark areas to, to get them to the right value. Uh, where if I just did all the rocks and then tried to put in the background, uh, the edges would be funky and it would also like not, it would just be hard to get all that smooth. So, all right, I'm going to put this back now so I can see what I'm doing. Drop that here. Like that. Good. Yeah, I started building up all the texture on these rocks already, so I'm going to keep that going. And a lot of this is regular brush work too, which is fun. So, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't stressing about it, but I was like, what am I going to do today? Because my daughter, I just drove her uh, and her, her boyfriend, Michael, to the airport this morning. And um, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do for the feed. And I'm like, oh, I wanted to get this video done. And I'm like, well, I know I want to do a time lapse. So guys got to hang out and watch that happen anyway. So there you go. Let's do this. So there are, there are um, almost like facets on these rocks. And I can use this color for this too. So I don't have to, you know, go and cut out or get, mix a new color for this. All I want to do is kind of show myself where those facets are of the rocks. And again, I can't really switch 
the camera to show you cutting so I'll try to give I'll try to show you guys but a lot of it's going to be off the camera but I'll try to do the best I can so you can see it I'll try to do this in this little gap right here but um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to take random rocks and I'm going to cut out the area that's that's like really kind of a darker value and again this is going to be the road map for me to be able to see where all the um, you know, the, the shading and the shadow is on all these rocks. So I'll do this one real quick and then I'll cut the rest of them and kind of keep going. So I just pop out this area and that's the shadowed area of this rock here. So I'm going to put this in here. Simon, two birds with one stone. It'd be cool to see the time lapse after watching it real time. Exactly. Yeah, that, yeah, that's it. And it's funny too, because the, the, Time lapse will be pretty extreme as far as the uh, speed. So, um, yeah, so what we do today will probably translate to like, if we flew work for an hour today, it's probably going to translate to like six seconds, something like that. It'll fly by. Because what I could do now that I'm on this, and I could actually time lapse the entire painting. You know, all that means is that I would just need to continually film this every time I every time I work on it which is possible totally possible all right so hopefully you see, see what I did I just kind of cut that out and then I just really lightly sprayed and, and hopefully can pick that up it's just very very faint all that does is that gives me the road map on on where the um, the uh, shadowing is on that rock so now I will rinse and repeat like in here and some of these will be, I'll see if I can do this so you guys, again, so you guys can see it. Because the trick is, is I can't move the, the panel, even though it, the panel slipped earlier. I can't really move it because it needs to stay in exactly the same spot for the time lapse. If not, it's crazy because it's bouncing around and it's hard to see what's going on. So, um, so that's why I can't keep switching cameras either. All right, so the next one's going to be a little fold here. I'm going to fold that up because this is more like a fade. This is close to where I was working last time. Yeah, it is where I was working last time, which is good. So I'll line this back up again. And I just need to do that bottom corner a little bit. Separate those rocks just to give me an indication on where that's supposed to be, like that. And like I said, then it's rinse and repeat. It's just, I keep pulling out pieces and marking this off so then when I go to put all the texture on there I really know where I'm going I it, it, for me it's when I start working on all that repetitive texture like the texture of the rock if it's so easy to just kind of get in the groove with the texture and not pay attention to where it's supposed to be um, because you're just kind of doing the thing you're just kind of putting all that texture in um, so if I have this road map I can actually see it so that I don't have to think about it. I, 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 it's right there already. So. Oh, and cheers for me today is uh, coffee. I'm still working on that. But um, again, for my UK friends, my uh, GMT plus friends, or would that be GMT minus when you head uh, east from GMT? I'm not sure, but either way, if you are cheersing, then cheers for you guys. That's awesome. All right, and um, now this is, uh, it's kind of, if you're talking about like a computer program like Photoshop, what I'm doing here to this template, it's kind of a destructive way to do it. Meaning as I'm cutting out these new templates, I'm destroying the template, so, um, which is fine. But um, what that means is that I can use the same template. So it's the same one I just used, but I cut out the bottom, the next rock here, and just folded it back. So that will allow me to um, just keep going with the same template again, because it doesn't have to be this doesn't have to be perfect by any stretch. But as I'm working, like we talked about this with the other painting too, the um, the fog painting that I was working on, like like that rock doesn't have to be exactly like it is in the photograph, the one down at the bottom there that I just painted in. But if it 
if it is, if I use the actual photocopy and cut out really what's there, that just when I when I go to look at it and I'm trying to you know figure it out on the on the reference photo, if I totally make it up and put it in a weird spot, I have to then kind of translate the photograph to match or to force it into what I kind of just made up on my own, which is fine and that can be done. But it for me it's so much easier to just kind of keep it what it's supposed to be and then just you know kind of go from there like not have to like redesign the whole thing going your direction we go minus there we go so plus if you're going uh, east of GMT so so to all my GMT plus friends <laughs> who are east of the UK or east of GMT if, you, if you're on and you're enjoying a beverage, uh, I'm living vicariously through you guys. All right, more the same. There's this rock. And what I'm doing is, too, by doing this, I'm, I'm kind of laying out where all the rocks are, too. So I'm doing all the, the shadow areas of them, but um, that, the, that just naturally draws them in as at, at the same time. So I'll have kind of everything all at once. This one, I'm going to cut out the whole thing, sort of, kind of. There we go. That's good. Okay, so this is a fun one, too. So this one over here, this one right here, got that lined up. And I've got it all cut out, but I didn't take anything out yet. I'll do that as I, as I paint it. So the first one, for instance, like the top one here, is needs to be put in first. So I have a cut that. So I give that a little hit, but then when I take this off, the rest of it, like that, I've already got that, that top piece in, you know, that area right there. So now I could just kind of do the rest of it. And I've done both. Hopefully that makes sense. So see, it's laying in all those rocks really, really easily, really quickly. Just, uh, it's a nice way to do it. And like I said, I'm still using the same, the same photocopy. Um, and as long as, you know, I can get the right pieces without everything falling out, I can just keep going like this. I mean, eventually I'll get to the point where enough of this template is gone and falling apart that, it, you know, it won't work anymore. But, um... But yeah, I just keep kind of working it till till I get to that point. Right now I'm doing this rock right here, which actually has, it's pretty much already done. Lovely. All right, so all these rocks over here are next so it's the same deal so I'll just pick like like one of them like this one see if you can see it yeah you can good pick this one here and cut out this one yeah nice Yeah, the program I use for this is actually the program that comes with the switcher in a way. I mean, it, you don't have to have the switcher to use their program. Uh, Blackmagic um, has a photo editing software that's called DaVinci Pro, and it is, um, it's a monster. It's a great, great program. So I, I made the commitment at the beginning of the year to kind of really push that and... Um, and just kind of like really refine these videos as they as they go because I mean it's I have the capability now of um, having some really you know n nice videos and I need to have the other end of it equally as nice and I am you know I'm learning 
what it takes to do that. Um, so that's all part of the deal. Jesse, what's up? Dwayne, what's happening? All right, I want to get this a little bit darker, this one here. And I know I cut it out because I can see the halo, but I might have gotten rid of it already, which I think I have, unfortunately. So I think that's, yeah, that's that rock right there. Okay, so I needed this rock here, but I don't know what I did with it. So I'll just cut it out again. And, you know, I'm just cutting this out of another one of the copies that I've already cut up. So makes it easy. Oops, as I almost lose it again. There we go. So this rock here is the one I wanted to leave in. So we'll put that there. Drop another magnet on that. Oh, actually, that's not where I want it. There we go. That's where I want it. Much better. Again, I'm not overly worried about the final, you know, the final colors and all that. This is, again, this is just to give those rocks th their their shape and their dimension. Um, see how green, green those rocks are coming in right now? Um, there's a lot of brown in them and a lot of, you know, um, uh, just other colors that are going to go on there, highlights and all that. So I'm not concerned with any of that. In fact, um, if this color is off, it actually helps the painting in a way because for me, because what happens is if it's, if it's off and I have to fight back, they'll just add more and more layers of color. And in the end, we'll make this much more complex. So for me, if I, if I can mix up a color that's really, really close and then I, I kind of leave that as the color, it, it, it makes it look very flat for me. So this is nice by kind of having to fight it a little bit. It'll give a lot of like depth and, and interest to it if the color has a lot going on in it. If I have to fight back from something, and this is a, a common painting thing too. You'll see like oil painters will, like even if they're doing like a regular landscape, like a green, you know, field or whatever, they'll have a red base coat. They'll, they'll gesso their canvas and then put, you know, this field of red over the whole thing and then they fight back from that. And what it does is it forces them to like have to have to create those colors on top and fight back from that. And if there's a spot in between that maybe doesn't have the opacity, that little bit of red, those little bits of red kind of flash through and they they kind of blend in with everything. And it's it's really pretty cool. So um, same kind of thing with this, but without without the extreme of going to from a color that is completely different. Yeah, colored grounds are a great way to do it. I mean, it's a lot of fun to, to kind of battle that because your brain doesn't want to do it. Your brain wants to have whatever you're painting, you want that color to first color down to be close to that, that and you know you don't want to fight it. But if I was doing this and I painted this whole thing purple and then had to work, work with that, you know, try to get the green back from the purple, I mean, it sets up a whole different thing. All right. If it, oh, if an airbrushing question that's uh, unrelated to what you're currently working on, is it cool to pick your brain for a moment? Simon, yeah, absolutely. That's what we're here for. The only thing is I can't switch out and show you a demo because, like I said, we're kind of do. Actually, I could because I could just stop the recording and then we could do, do whatever you wanted. But, uh, yeah, but shoot, let, let it fly. While you're coming up with the question, too, the, so there's another little... It's another little... Um, rock here but I'm just going to use a photocopy one of the other bits to kind of create that I don't have to cut out a new copy for that because I can see the edge already where it's supposed to be so that's it the same thing right here too there's stuff going on here oh no actually that's a pretty decent edge there I want to make sure I get that the right way and Simon retracted his message Simon <laughs> Hopefully you're you're typing what your question is because yes, uh, if I didn't say it before you did that, yeah, absolutely, fire away. 
completely unrelated is awesome. That's what that's what Thursdays are for. Like I said, Thursdays here, and I think the live feeds are going to stay this way on YouTube unless something gra drastically changes. But the Thursday feeds on YouTube are going to be literally whatever I'm working on in, in you know in in the studio for at that time. So it's literally like you guys walked in while I'm working. Mondays I kind of try to set up something. Um, but uh, Thursdays are just kind of whatever. So with that being said, um, it's a good time for you guys to come in and, you know, ask your questions. And, uh, you know, I really hope the channel grows a lot. And what I see happening is um, if I do go with some sort of, you know, um, subscription component to part of it, what that'll do is it'll allow people to... Um, ask uh, specific things and as far as demos and um, time lapses and things like that so they can make almost like make suggestions for for the channel which will be which will be a lot of fun too and it'll give a kind of a unique component I have black everywhere where'd that come from i have a uh, black all over my finger and i don't know where it came from it's up there too huh there we go so I have a Stormtrooper piece I'm working on. I'm painting black over a white base. Uh, I know I want to paint some highs in towards the end. Okay, cool. Keep it going. I think I know where this is going. My first question as you are continuing on with your question, Simon, is um, you say you're working on it. So that means you've already started it. Make sure I, I understand that before we go too much farther. Am I right in thinking that using a neutral gray from Createx set would limit the blue shift? Um, so, Simon, you've been around. Uh, you've seen all the stuff that I've been doing. So the one of the big reasons I switched to that gray base on that on all the 543s is for exactly that reason. It gives me that neutral color to start so that I can spray all the white first, all the white highlights. Um, not highlights, not only just highlights, but the white areas. Oh, you already started. Okay. Um, yeah, so then from there, it makes it really easy because then the, all the gray from the, the, the base that I put down already, that becomes all the mid-tones. And then, and then I'm just adding the white and then the black details over it. And then you don't get any of that blue shift. But if you've already got it, um, you're painting the black over a white base. Okay. Um yeah, what I would do is just um, what you got to do is get any of the white, the lighter areas sandwiched in between something and something else. The, the trick is, is if you have that, if you have the white be the last thing you put on it, then you're going to get that blue shift with it. Now, if you do, um, I went over on one of the YouTube videos that that shifty, the shifty color that um, it's um, red oxide. So I mix that really thin. You can actually get rid of that blue shift. It's not the best way to do it because if you get any of that on any of the actual white parts, it's going to turn orange. But it does it does remove that blue shift. So that you can do that. Or like I said, if you sandwich the white, the highlights in between something else, like if, if white isn't the last thing you do, then, then you can also kind of get rid of that blue shift. So you paint in your white highlights, you get that blue shift, but then the next color to go on there is a little bit darker. So as you're shading over where the blue shift is, that will that will shift back to the gray. So I hope that makes sense. And um, what I may do is just like a, I mean, I did do the blue shift a little bit, but I might do some other demos with that to kind of help people get through that a little bit. I'm not too scared of the blue shift as I'm happy to lightly spray some orange, just thinking of uh, saving a job a little. Yeah, the other thing to do, Simon, too, is um, if you embrace that blue shift, um, you can, you just, you just got to make everything shift to that cooler blue. You know what I'm saying? So you can't have, if you get rid of all the warmer browns or warmer darks, um, and so the whole thing shifts blue, then it's all relative. You won't even see any of it, which is, and I think, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of a, a common way to do it too. The only problem with that is um, when you're working with the Createx, the, the new stuff, the opaque black, it's a really warm black. It's like, you know, the Blumber color, basically. 
So that means everywhere you put that, you're going to have to like shift that to blue to get that to work, which is also tough. But yeah, if you have an instance where it's kind of weird and you want to shoot me a picture of it, that would give me a little bit more insight on, you know, what, you know, what's going on there. But, um, yeah. Oh, how did I do that? I missed that whole thing. This part down here is dark. This rock here, so here's a good example. This one I'm spraying in now, this bottom one down here. This rock isn't real green, it's very yellow, but I've got all the green on there and everything. So that's gonna be one I'm gonna to have to fight back from. I'm gonna to have to change that green to a brown as I go, but it's gonna be good, it's gonna be fun because I'll really have to work to get that to be the right color. The trick is, is to not settle. Because you see how, even though I've got a lot of um, shading in this now and you start to really feel those rocks kind of piled up there, it still has a real flat feeling because it's all the same greens. You know, there are only two greens there. There's a light green and then this shading green that I'm using. Uh, so it's still, even though it has some feel to it, it, it still also feels really flat. So once I get the other colors in there, then it'll help the complexity and stuff. So sandwiching the white in between would work great for this piece. So uh, that's the plan. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Simon, just keep that in your head like that. Make sure your whites aren't the last thing to go on. I, and I say that generally like that last bright, super bright, shiny highlight that that can go on last. I, I always do that. Um, but anywhere where there is a, a fade, you know, like like a lighter, like a lit area that that needs to be in between something else. Um, and uh, that'll work because it's amazing how the the opaque black by itself will cancel blue shift so as you as you kind of work that brown over the blue shift it it, it does a great job at getting rid of it so uh, it really is kind of cool yeah but working with a mix of wicked smoke black and a drop of opaque so i'd struggle to shift the whole piece yeah don't do that um but the background contains some cooler colors so a little shift may be okay yeah yeah yeah, and um, the same thing. You wouldn't necessarily have to shift the entire painting. Just have to make it look like that shift was intentional. That's, you know what I mean? Like whenever you see that blue shift happen on a portrait by accident, it's always in, you know, like on the nose or on the middle of the you know, forehead where the light's hitting the most. But if you include that in other places, now it starts to look intentional. And that's, that's a good thing. All right, what's going on up in here? I feel like I'm missing something up in there above that rock. Oh, I am. I'm missing a bunch of stuff. What do you know? How'd I miss that? Uh, okay. All right, there we go. So more of these little bits and pieces here. Okay. Oh, and this one too. You guys are there. I think you can see what I'm doing. I have the um, the macro lens on right now on the on the camera, which is great because the camera now is the camera you guys are looking through is about three feet away from me behind me and over my shoulder it's this i've had this lens for a long time um but i hadn't had a chance to use it with a live feed setup because my older canon camera couldn't um couldn't really be used without a lot of extra stuff to get it to work um because of the signal that it produced so but now that I have the new camera, I can use this lens, and it's, um, it's really nice. So you guys are, like I said, you guys are about three feet away from the board. Again, I can't turn on the overhead camera because it will show up in the video. But um, uh, now you're pretty much out of the way of me, so I can kind of do my thing. Yeah, no problem, son. Absolutely. All right. So, yeah, these couple other spots that I missed, I'm going to hit them. And what's something down here? What was I looking at down here? Oh, nothing. I got all that. Okay, that's good. Yeah, this will be good because, uh, like I said, Ken from uh, Monday night had asked for this 
you know, uh, a little bit of clarification on, on the rocks. You know, we asked how I would t kind of tackle it. Um, and I, I wanted to have, like I said, I wanted to have kind of a complete demo for the Monday night, but it just, it, it didn't, like I got what I wanted to get done, done, but in the end it just didn't, I don't know, I felt like it could have been a lot more. So I'm glad that I kind of came up with this idea so that Ken will be able to see the rest of it really. Carefully put a magnet on this so I don't damage it. This paint is starting to coagulate, which is good because we're just about there with this. That's all texture on this one, although there's something's going on there that I don't have. Where is that? Where is that? Oh, that's there. What am I missing there? Oh, that whole section. Huh. Okay. Okay. Chris Garcia, what's up? Chris, my birthday was awesome. Yeah, it was really, really fun. Uh, my daughter and her boyfriend flew in um on sunday and they spent well they were here they were here till uh this morning they, they took off this morning um so that was really really good she told me right around um christmas time or right before christmas time no christmas time that uh they had uh they were planning on coming out for my birthday so that was that was a blast the only thing um and i didn't have plans chris but i mean it had i had i had i known that um you know, the helmet class was going on. I could have easily planned a trip home for my birthday this year, too. But uh, but I'll catch the next one. I'm glad you went. I'm glad it looked like a great time. That hood you did was, was crazy. I can't believe you guys got all that done in a few days. It was amazing. Although Simon and Chris are there. It doesn't really surprise me that they got everyone, you know, to do some amazing things. But uh, I'll catch them on the next one for sure. Yeah, there's a place, um, and it was great because I had a. We were gonna go out to dinner on uh, Tuesday, and um, you know I had a place in mind. You know, a place we go to a lot of stuff, and it's it's a cool place. It's like a sports bar type of thing, you know, but a little bit more than that. Um, so we're gonna do that, and then there's a place over in um, Kent, Ohio, right near the college. And most people know Kent from the um, unfortunate uh, shooting back in the 60s or early 70s. I'm not sure when that was. I can't remember. But um, anyway, uh, there's a place called Mike's over over in Kent, and it is uh, it is a blast. They have a uh, they have a big X-wing that the, like a full size X-wing fighter in the front yard or the front parking lot of the building. Um, the menu people, the menu is so much fun that people would actually steal the menu. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's a really cool place. The food is great. The, it's, uh, it's just, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just, it's a really fun place. So Marge had said, Hey, why don't we just go there? And that was, uh, that was an excellent suggestion. So, uh, we ended up doing that and then we just kind of came back and hung out for a little bit and yeah, it was just a really, really good birthday. 1970 yeah I think that's when it was the uh, Crosby uh, uh, Crosby Stills and Nash song uh, Ohio is written about that too yeah that's right because it was oh, obviously yeah it was a Vietnam not protest but it was a Vietnam era thing hold on while I try to figure out what I'm doing here <laughs> Like, where does this go? That's what I'm talking about. This you get, I get like you know, distracted, and the, the repetitive patterns are all the same. And I'm like, ah. Nick, what's up, man? Travis, what's going on? Yeah, they do exactly. Yeah, the the rocks, um, they they look really weird before, but again, this is why the 
um, time lapse is going to be a lot of fun for this. So yeah, for anyone who's just jumping on now, um, the reason why you only get one camera and it's not switching is because I'm actually recording this right now. Um, and all this stuff that I'm doing right now is going to be uh, time lapsed so that um, so that in the end you'll be able to see uh, like I don't know how much I mean I'll try to record all of it but um, we'll see uh, but anyway uh, a large part of these the, this area down here is going to be time lapse so you'll be able to watch kind of the whole thing develop so but yeah they are pretty funky so what I'm doing is these two rocks over here are the ones that are out of the water and then they're the big rocks that are up above are also out of the water but all of these down in here are under the water. So that's kind of what we were doing with it. Simon's getting some stuttering. I'm okay on this end, Simon. I don't know why that would be. What's going on with that rock up there? How did I miss that? How did I miss that? Oh, well. Sorry. Went over and over the star effect so that Simon could uh, take that back to the UK class. Oh, that's cool. Lee Jordan, what's up? Yeah, I got to get back on. It's my fault that um, we don't have any dates or setup on the class that I want to do with them. Because uh, I'm still kind of working on setting up like how I want to do it and what I want to get done uh, so that's on me um, but um, but I will get that done that'll be a lot of fun to to be able to go over there and, and teach a class with them all right this rock here is a good one because this one here defines the the rocks that are out of the water which is nice so this one's about here And I finally, um, man, you it, customs for for shipping out of the out of the country. I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but if it's just the U.S. customs or what. But um, when I ship out those 543s, like for instance, Angus won this week. Um, he's in the U.K. and um, Richard Bernier had one um, a couple of weeks ago. He's in Canada. So when I go to the post office, sometimes they say, you know, you need customs and duties or customs forms for your for, for the packages. And then other times they say you don't. So and, and it's true. I've shipped out stuff that has, has both had customs forms on them and stuff that does not have customs forms on them. And all of them have gone out except for Richards. Richards came back. So what I'm going to do is now I think I'm just going to put customs forms on all of them. So I don't know why I thought of that. I think because this is majority of uh, the viewers today are, are non-U.S. viewers. So um, if you're on the Monday night and you win, um, they'll still come in at zero value. Um, I do that just so, you know, you don't have to pay any kind of customs and duties on them. Um, but yeah, it's the never ending trying to figure out, you know, what the hell people are doing. Cause I don't care. I mean, I, I'll fill them out and you know, when you, when you do that, it changes the, the value of shipping. But for those 543s, you know, it is what it is. All right, let's get this out of here. Oh, I can just pull that whole thing. All right. So I can get rid of this whole thing. Michael, what's up? That's awesome, Michael. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Re Nick, yeah, Nick has rest restarted. That'll work. Yeah, it's funny. I ju I'm watching on my tablet as well. That's where I'm getting all the, the uh, comments from. And uh, it's it's lagging for me a little bit, too. So I don't know what's going on. It's weird. But I can also tell, well, no, the cache is almost full, too. Yeah, that might be it. I don't know. Well, the good news is 
Oh, yeah, the good news is the um, the recorded part of it should be fine. So um, once I get the uh, time lapse part of it up, it should be pretty smooth. Oh, Lee did get his. See, now, Lee, yours went without a customs form, I think. So I don't understand. I don't know. I don't get it. All right. Got all that in. And the painting moved, too. So that's going to show up. Oh, well. I was, at least I was smart and marked where the painting is on the board. So if it does move, I can move it right back to the same spot. That's me being smart, <laughs> which doesn't happen often. This last rock over here just needs a little bit of green because it's since I've done it everywhere, um, I'm just going to drop in a little bit of green there. But you really start to get a feel for, you know, those rocks now. And now I know where they all are and I know they're all lit the right way and it's a great base. So think about this. If you guys um, followed, you know, like the, um, the the open studio where I start that whole thing with an HD stencil. What I've essentially done here is exactly what the HD stencil would give me. You know what I mean? It gives me the, the rough values so that now I don't have to think about where the where the light source is coming from when I start getting into the really, you know, all the nitty gritty details and things like that i already know i can see it so i don't have to guess and that's largely what happened with this part over here um you know i just kind of did an area of it but i really wasn't sure of well i mean i i was i could see it but i wasn't really planning for the lights and darks but now i can definitely tell where everything goes all right so now i can start messing with it i think what i'm going to do is i'll probably start the, the rocks definitely have a more yellow feel over this side um, and this water is much clearer than I originally thought. I thought the green was caused by the, um, the depth of the water and part of it is that, but this water is super clean. Um, because up, up on this part, I didn't realize that this was underwater, the bottom half of this rock. Ours can be a little weird too. I only send paintings to another country during an art swap and I take part in it. I really be careful now. Filter forms on receipt doesn't have to pay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. And um, here's the thing. If you order something from me, on, um, it's going to have the value of whatever you put on it. One, because it's it, it's insured that way. Um, so there's not much uh, that I can do on that front. But if you win a painting, even though it's worth, you know, what it's worth, I'm still going to put the value at zero. And, um, you know, you and I will um, take the chance that it'll get there okay. If it doesn't, you know, I've never lost one, but um, I, I would just replace it anyway. I'd find a way to do a new one for that person. So um, so that works out really well. But um, And not that, you know, it's coming across my brain right now because we're talking about it. But if um, you haven't won a 543 and you are out of the country, I would very, very strongly suggest not having it framed. Like it's framing it as an option when you purchase it or win. But um, that adds so much to the shipping, it's ridiculous. If it goes from an envelope to a box, it's, it's really expensive. It's like three times the amount. So, um, you know, they're all set up to be put into frames when you get them. And if you just grab a five by seven frame um, when you get it, you literally can drop it right in and it looks great. Um, and it'll save you, you know, what I did in the past when people want it framed is I would just split the shipping with them. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> All right. So this, this one here needs to be yellow, um, to really pull it off if I really wanted to block it in, but I'm just going to start messing with the rocks, I think, because that's more paintbrushy type of thing. So what I'm going to do to make my life simple, I'm going to run this, this for another nine minutes and then I'm going to, um, stop because that will give me an hour on this, this video. And that just makes it easy to, um, to deal with later on. It's not too big. Um, so we'll cut it a little bit short today, but we'll get back at it. So again, this isn't, um, this isn't something I'll be doing every week. So don't worry about it. Um, we'll get back to normal stuff next week. I think <laughs> who knows? Uh, so we have paint pal, so it's pretty much true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. William Klein, what's up? All right. So now I've got the, the, if you guys watched before, there was a, um, like a, like a bluish green that I used for the texture. That's kind of what I got in here now. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start laying in the texture. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of looking at the reference photo. Yeah. Oh, why don't I have that rock? Oh, I do have that rock. I'm, see, I'm working on the wrong rock. So I'm just going to start the texture here. And again, this is where this building up really kind of comes into play. And I'll do this section down here for you guys. And then, um, and then when I switch over, you know, and start working on this again for the time lapse, I'll just do it the way I would normally do it, which means I would put this texture everywhere that it needed to be. I wouldn't just go in one area. Like, I'm not going to finish one rock and then just move on to the next. I'll kind of develop them all at once. If that makes sense. Michael's got to get back to work. Thanks, Michael. That's awesome. Just want to know that you give me illustration colors, and I'm looking forward to Saturday working with them. Awesome, Michael. Yeah, the illustration colors are a different beast. I don't use them as much as um, some other artists, but um, but yeah, they are. They have such a great line of color. So, Mike, have a good one, and uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll catch up with you along the way. Oops, I'm just draw that. And I've also got. Um, since I'm back, kind of getting everything ready or, you know, getting back up to speed, um, I've ordered the, the stuff I need to get this fourth camera going. So, like, uh, right now I'm using the palette down below, and you guys can't see that. But in the regular, once I get the feeds going, um, I'll be able to switch to a camera or have that camera going all the time where you can actually, you'll see the palette on the top of the screen as well. So that'll be fun because if I'm mixing up a color like this, color like this brown, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to see that, which will be which will be good. All right, so this color here is a is really brown, uh, mostly brown. So that's kind of what I'm starting out with here. So I gotta turn this rock to a little bit more yellow than it than it is. So I'm gonna start the base with with the brown. And again, I've already done the work on this, um, you know, where the shadow, not shadow, but the where the edge of the rock is, where it rolls over in its shape. So now I can just follow that, which is good. So a lot of times what I'll do too, like in, before I commit to doing this all over the place, I'll do a small section like this. And then that way I can kind of see where I'm going. Like I know I got to put some more yellow in that. So the way that's going to work is I'll grab some white and some, oops, not that. Grab some white and some yellow ochre. And mix up a, like a real pale yellow. And then I can go back in this section with that pale color and kind of start breaking it up. So what I'm doing in this really small section like I did on the other two is I'm, I'm working on figuring out how to do the rest of it. So I can make a bunch of mistakes in this area because I can always just cover it up and it's pretty dark down here anyway. Um, so I could do a lot with it. So this is kind of the small area that I'll use to really kind of figure out what's going on. And then once I have the small area, then I'll have kind of the marching orders for the rest of the painting. I won't have to, you know, continuously try to figure it out. So this, this lighter yellow is doing a couple things. One, it's breaking up that brown that I just put on making it look more natural, more like the stone that it is. But this yellow is also covering that green too, but it's not totally covering the green. So some of that green is still popping through and it gives it that feeling like it is underwater. It's kind of the way it's built up here. And then it works the same way. Um, even though this is on a small scale, this area is really tiny. I start with these like broad, not broad, but bigger detail type of textures and then each pass um, I go through I'll reduce the size of the details and put less on there so the last ones are like these little really super dark and light specks but they'll give that that rock the, the real you know kind of texture that it really needs and I'd love to zoom in so you guys can see this but again you know I can't because of the way we're doing it but um, but it'll be worth it. I'm still working with that yellow color. And hopefully what you're seeing is that corner. See how brown that is now? There's not a lot of green showing through there, but there is enough of it. So it just switched that whole rock to that brownish color. Now I'll jump back with the, the darker color again, but this is much darker. But again, each pass has a little less paint and it's a little tighter detail. 
And what that does is, again, it's, it's what I talked about in the composition video briefly uh, on Tech Tuesday. It's repetition and variation. So I have this texture. I'm kind of putting in the same texture, but each pass is slightly different than the last. And when it all blends together, it's really hard to see the individual bits and pieces. But that repetition and variation is what gives it that realistic look. It's making it look like what it really should be. Hopefully all that yapping made sense. Um, this probably won't have a voiceover on the time lapse. I think it's just going to be, um, you know, maybe some music or something. But, um, yeah, that's, that's probably the way it's going to go. But who knows? I may also do some time lapses with some voiceovers so I can point out some things. A lot of people just watch the, the time lapses to see the painting come together. They're not really interested in learning how it came together. They just want to see it come together, which is also good. So again, same color. It's, it's, um, it's essentially the Blumber. It's uh, burnt umber and black. It's fairly thin, so it's working real well with this watercolor brush. Um, but I can also build it up slowly. So gives it that feel. Now picture that everywhere. <laughs> So I feel good about that. I feel like that's heading in the right direction. So that's, that's good. I can kind of keep those marching orders with the same thing. All right, so we are working up to the hour spot. So I'm going to stop painting here. I'm going to turn the uh, recorder off, and then I can switch over and talk to you guys. So I'm going to hit the stop for that. Should hopefully stop. Yes, yes. Okay, now I can relax. All right, I'll leave that set up just like it is, and I'll switch back to this one, and there we go. Um, yeah, well, that's cool. So hopefully, like, that was an hour. Again, it depends on what the final thing is. Usually I try to get it so that um, a minute is roughly about a second. Uh, that seems to be a good time-lapse speed. Um, I'm working on another time-lapse of a really older painting that I did, too, and what I'm doing there is I'm taking the stills and kind of weaving them together one after another so that it you don't see me working on it but you see the progression of it so that's going to be another time lapse that's going on i'll do a bunch of those because i have a lot of um a lot of photos of paintings as i'm working on them um so i'll be able to kind of put those together as time lapses too so that is kind of what's going to happen on fridays i think and i'll do one week of time lapse and then one week of a q a uh, and then depending on how great the subscriptions uh keep coming in um, again, we'll do maybe some sort of, um, you know, uh, like a join type of thing so that, um, if you want, um, exclusive stuff that content that it'll be, it'll be that way too. So I think that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> it's going good though. All right. So to everyone, thank you all for coming by again, again, I can't say thank you enough for all the, um, birthday wishes this week. It was, it was a fantastic week um, and again you know you guys are on YouTube watching this right now um, I uh, it's it's huge to me you know I've, I've made the commitment um, whenever it was September I think to really push this channel and, and you guys have been um, you guys have been doing great pushing it right along for me so I'll keep producing content and if you guys want to keep hanging out I I would love that so subscribe hit that bell icon do all those YouTube things and um, that's what I got. So I'm Steve Leahy. This is Thursday Live. Thank you again. And um, yeah, I'll catch you all on the next one. Thanks.